Welcome back to the Pan Am Center. Adam Young alongside former Aggie assistant coach Russ Bradford as the Aggies seek perfection in the WAC, trying to finish 16-0. It's never been done before in the conference. Two teams have gone 14-0. Nobody has ever gone 16-0. Chris Giant and the Aggies have won 18 straight games. It is the third longest win streak in program history. Chris Giant, 82 and 17. The overall mark at New Mexico State also won 21 games in his lone season as the head coach at Bowling Green. And it appears right now his program is really peaking. The Aggies coming off maybe their two best defensive efforts of the season in a pair of lopsided wins last week against Grand Canyon and Bankersfield on the road. It is senior night. The Aggies will start five seniors. Sean Buchanan, Terrell Brown, C.J. Bobbitt, Yvonne Aore Coachea, and Trev Queen. All notch a start here tonight for the Aggies on senior night. Head coach for California Baptist is doing quite the job. Rick Croy now in his seventh season. And he's been taking the Lancers through the transition from Division II through Division I. This is year two of a four-year transition to Division I for California Baptists. They scored at a very high rate. 81 points per game this year for CBU. Milan Aqua, Brandon Boyd, Farron Flavors Jr., Zach Parag, and Dejon Davis, the five starters for CBU. Aqua's averaging 18 a game. Davis almost averaging a double-double, and he has a league-high 11 double-doubles this season. Great atmosphere again. Russ Bradbird, your keys to the game. Well, the Aggies are going to have to get out and run, 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 because they're deeper than Cal Baptist, and I think it'll wear them down if they can kind of keep the pace going at a crazy fast pace. They've got to hassle Milan Aqua. He's as good a player as there is in the league. He's a legitimate NBA prospect. And then they've got to really crash the offensive boards because that's when the Aggies are at their best. Is they'll shoot 37% and still win the game, which is really remarkable. The Aggies won the first matchup this year by 15 in Riverside. The Lancers scored at a very high clip, but defensively, Russ, they have struggled in some games this year. On the flip side, the Aggies' defense the last two games has been as good as it's been all year. Well, it's a common coaching philosophy, and uh, if you shoot poorly and still win the game, and Chris Jans' team seem to do it over and over and over again. But uh, I don't want to take anything away from Rick Croy. He's one of the best young coaches in the West, without question. And uh, they're really an up-and-coming program, so it should be a terrific matchup tonight. The top scoring team in the WAC, California Baptist, against the top defensive team in the WAC, NM State, as the Aggies conclude their regular season. And the Lancers will have one more game on Saturday against UTRGV. Two teams have gone 14 0 in the WAC Utah in the late 90s, TCU in the late 90s. Rick Majerus coached that Utah team, Billy Tubbs coached that TCU team. Nobody, Russ, has ever gone 16-0 in the WAC, and the Aggies can achieve that here tonight. And Chris Giants can join elite company with Billy Tubbs and late great Mc Rick Majerus. And, and a uh, snappy sport coat to boot. Did you see that beautiful Aggie-colored uh, crimson sport coat? You know, yeah. he got that in Italy a couple of years ago. My gosh. All the way from Italy. Well, uh, he, he'll need to go to Spain to find another big man as good as Ivan Aure Coachea. And the opening tap is through the fingertips of CBU and it's Aggie Ball to start. And M State coming off a 14-point win last Thursday at Grand Canyon. We had a 16-point win last Saturday at Bankersfield. Good crowd here on senior night. And Chris Jans rolls out five senior starters. CJ Bobbitt making his first start since mid-December. A double team Aore Koachea. Buchanan bounces it down low on the baseline for Aore Koachea, who scored 20 in the first matchup. Great move, a scoop and a score. Boy, I miss him already, Adam. He's so crafty down there, and it's just, it's unbelievable how fluid he is, uses both hands, pivots either way. Scoring production has been down recently for Yvonne. Three straight single-digit scoring games. Three is off the mark for fair and flavors. Hurrah, can't put it back in. And it's cleared on the weak side by C.J. Bobbitt, the senior. 
out of Colleen, Texas. Right back to uh, Ore Koachea, defended by the 6'11", Zach Perra. And he's whistled for an offensive foul for lowering his shoulder. I think that's the right call. And there's teams that are now, Adam, it seems like many teams are doing this. They'll wait till Adam, uh, uh, sorry, Big Yvonne takes a dribble and then go double team him. And so it's, it's, it's a, that little cat and mouse thing game that's going on. Uh, he's a good passer down there, but it's, uh, but it's difficult to score on two guys. Lancers lead the whack in scoring, scoring margin, three-point percentage, and a three-pointers made. This is Milan Aqua, junior from Bakersfield, one of the best scorers in the whack. In the corner for Flavors, the best three-point shooter in the league. It's Queen in the air. Aqua with three on the timer. Fires a jumper, and it's too strong. Trav Queen looking for a breakout game here on senior night. Gets it back for Bobbitt, swings it for Buchanan. Tend to shoot for Aore Koachea. Skips out to Brown, extra pass from the corner. Here's Queen. Finger roll no good. Cleared away by Para. Always need to know where Aqua is on the floor as well as Flavors who misses again. Slow start for Fair and Flavors. Buchanan to the rim, extra pass in the corner. Trent Queen for three. Well, that's what Sean Buchanan is, does does so well. Is that he had a layup there, but saw somebody else with a. It's like a layup for Trent Queen, I suppose. Timeout for CBU and head coach Rick Croy. Great start for the Yankees ahead 5-0, and so far Russ slowing down this potent CBU offense. No, that's that's right, and uh, and it is a potent offense indeed. There's you know Rick Croy has already has a terrific reputation as, as one of the better young coaches in the West, and uh, they're just always very difficult to guard. But the Aggies have got had their way so far. I said pregame, I felt like this would be a breakout game for Trev Queen here tonight. He looks different than what he did a week ago when we saw him last. Well, he's you know it's a, sort of a second season for him. He's come back from the injury, and uh, he's going to need to get on track if the Aggies are going to win the WAC tournament for sure, and if they're going to win tonight. Queen is still averaging 13 a game, but he's been in single figures in four of the previous five since returning from injury. This is a really intriguing matchup down low with Aore Koachea, who's given up about three inches on the big fella, Zach Parag, on both ends of the floor. Uh -huh. Aore Koachea is on the bench. Johnny McCants is in for the first time tonight. Brandon Boyd, backdoor for Flavors, met at the rim by McCants, and he's whistled for a foul. Chris Jans can't believe it. It was well, pretty vertical yeah. there. I don't know, it's a, that's a tough one. But this is where uh, Fern Flavors is so dangerous. He's such a great three-point shooter that you've got to, they're doing all they can to take away the three and it makes you vulnerable to the back door cut. This Lancer's team shoots free throws well. They are shooting 78% for the line as a team which is first in the WAC, flavors 77% individually. There's been a number of transfers for Rick Roy. Aqua transfer from Washington State. Flavors came in from Fairfield, which is a Division I school. We also have Brandon Boyd, who transferred in from Idaho State. Just kind of what you have to do when you're transitioning. They are not eligible for the postseason for a few more years. This is year two of a four-year transition to Division One, Rumbling down the lane is Bobbitt, and he's fouled. But you know, Adam, they're, they're pretty close already. I mean, they're clearly they're clearly the number two team in the league. They beat New Mexico State a year ago. It's really tough to recruit to, Russ, when you're transitioning from Division Two to Division One, because if you're recruiting high school guys early on in the transition, they, they can't play for championships. That's right, but 
Let's not forget for California Baptist, they've got a beautiful campus. It's a terrific school, great location, kind of a nice medium-sized town, not as congested as much of Los Angeles. It's 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 a terrific location, and, and Rick Croy, I think they've got they've got their man. And yeah, they have a really, really good head coach, Rick Croy, who coached under longtime St. Mary's head coach Randy Bennett. And they scored a very, very high rate. This is Brandon Boyd out of the backcourt. Six to one Aggies here in the early stages. Around defending flavors tightly. Works his way to the rim. Floats it out for Dejon Davis, who was four of four from three last Saturday, and he turns it over. Brown on the baseline, and he's bumped. Bumped by Flavors. And that's foul number two on Fair and Flavors Jr. That's big for CBU. Watch, you know, Terrell Brown is a terrific three-point shooter, but he's pretty quick off the dribble as, he, as we saw there in good body control. Sean Buchanan will trigger in, playing in career game number 100 as an Aggie. Brown is hit, no call. Aqua trying to find Boyd in transition, and he turns it over. A four on two for the Aggies. Brown from three. Well, that was a great defense by the Aggies. Just one little deflection, and it opened things up for the steal. Sloppy start offensively for CBU. They've committed two turnovers. They are 0 of 4 from the field. Their only point was on a free throw. Double team comes and Davis throws it away. No numbers for Buchanan, he'll lob it anyway. McCants went over the back of Aqua and he's whistled for the foul. I don't think Johnny wanted it. Buchanan tossed it. And the foul is offensive on Johnny McCants. Nine to one Aggies as they seek perfection here at the Pan Am. He's trying to sweep the season series against California Baptist. NM State off to a hot start tonight. Nine to one they lead. These two programs met all the way back in early January. It was January 4th. It was the conference opener for the Yagis, and the Yagis posted 86 points. AJ Harris played in this game. It was his lone conference game. Uh, Ore Coachea scored 20. Johnny McCants was good. He scored 17 for the Yagis in this game, and the Yagis cruised which was a little surprising after how well the Lancers played the Aggies a season ago. Well, I think by, uh, California Baptist beating the Aggies a year ago, they're, they're completely on New Mexico State's radar. They're not going to take this team lightly. And of course, there's no reason to take these guys lightly. They're very good. The foul before the timeout was called on Aqua. It was not called on McCants, even though the official Eric Anderson pointed at Johnny as if to say the foul was on him. It was called an aqua. Popping out is Bobbin, and he trails the three. CJ Bobbin is 17th made three this year. Milan Aqua to the rim, stripped by Rice, who got his hand on it. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Jabari, who's fresh off the bench, not starting here tonight because of all the seniors on senior night. That's what uh, C.J. Bobbitt does so well and how he helped the Aggies so much early in the year. And uh, it's important that he makes those threes as the whack tournament approaches. Now is called before the Lancers get it in. It's on Jabari Rice, who's defending Aqua. So this is a big test for the redshirt sophomore from Houston. Now Aqua sends it in for sophomore and Australian Glenn Morrison. Three Australians this year for head coach Rick Roy. The Idaho State transfer Boyd. He'll trigger straight away. Shallow, and the struggles continue for CBU. All of six for the field. And Chris Trienz is leaving C.J. Bobbitt in this game. This is the best he's looked in a while. Bobbitt catches, pitches outside for Evan Gilliard, who's off the bench tonight as well. The 
Wing to wing for Gilliard. Four to shoot. McCants in the mid post. Back door for Jabari Rice. And it was touched by Bobbitt. And it was below the cylinder. It was through the net. And CJ Bobbitt punched it out. That seemed like it was already in the basket. It was. Let's, it let's was watch down it again. the that, cylinder. That, that shouldn't be a goaltend if it already went in the basket. Well, yeah. it's, it was going to go in, but. It was a strange thing to do, though. I don't know if I've ever seen, <laughs> ever seen that in all my years. I've seen a guy knock it up from uh, inside the basket. I don't think Chris Jans will mind that, though. That's C.J. Bobbitt being a little too aggressive. Yes, that's a, that's a good problem. I, I completely agree. Double team comes. Our Dejan Davis throws out of it for Bull Quoll. Morrison blocked away by Rice at the rim. McCants on the spin. Tapped by Quoll. Saved by Queen. Step back three from the corner. Wow, well, he's back. <laughs> but did you see that one, Adam? That may, that, may make the, that may make the highlights there. Wow. This is a different squad we saw two weeks ago, Ross. Yeah. There's as good as an extra as, tick of energy right now. As good as they were two weeks ago. Aqua has it roll home. The first made field goal for the Lancers. It comes with 13.35 left in the first half. So six and a half minutes of, of, of scoreless. As di and this is, as we talked about, California Baptist is very difficult to guard. Right back to McCants. This one is too strong. Boy tracks down the long miss. No numbers, he'll attack anyway. And Evan Gillier draws the charge. That was exactly the right call on Evan Gilliard, Chicago Public League tough. He'll be up in a minute, don't worry, Adam. That was completely the right call. But Gilliard with a shot in the eye. I think Rick Roy just got teed up. Rick Roy was near midcourt. He was well outside of the coach's box, did not like the call. And it looks like he's been teed up. And that's Adam Jacobson, one of the assistant coaches for uh, Aggie fans will remember him. He was the guard from Pacific that just caused New Mexico State all kinds of problems in the 90s. And so it doesn't surprise me that he's uh, uh, one of the top young assistants. Daryl Gelinas, Doran Gottschall, and Eric Anderson are three officials tonight. How about the energy on senior night for the Aggies? Uh, they thrive off this crowd. And Trevlin Queen, he's you know, such, an inter such an interesting kid. He's getting the crowd back into it here during, the, during this little break. First technical free throw for Trev Queen, who is 83% for the year. He's now 16 of 19 in league games. Chris Jans talked a lot this week about this club and how they thrive off big crowds, big environments. They love playing here at home. They also love playing on the road. Queen gets one out of two. And it will also be Aggie Ball. Rightfully so, Russ. I think a lot of folks on the outside right now are saying if California Baptist was eligible for the conference tournament, they could give the Aggies a challenge, which no question. I think people should say that, but I think the Aggies are trying to make a loud statement on that case here tonight. That's right. And uh, no one wants to end the regular season on a defeat. But I, I, think, I think California Baptist has a really bright future. Skip pass to McCants. On the penetration, finger roll is blocked by Morrison. But first a foul was called on Dejan Davis. And it wasn't Davis who was guarding him, it was Morrison, but Davis pushed just enough right there. And Johnny McCants will shoot too. Yeah, it was just before the shot, I think, was the, was the call. Farron Flavors is already on the bench with two personals, so the Lancers have to be careful. Parag comes in, replaces Morrison for Rick Roy. We're going to see it was not a shooting foul. 
And was foul number six, though, on CBU. Chris Gian's recycling a lot of players in and out here in the early seven plus. Rice to Gilliard, fires it outside on the arc. Three is no good. Power dribble for Ivan Aore. Coach Jaya. Boy. He's so tough, and, and the Aggies are at their best when they go to the offensive board like that. Gilliard often makes that shot, by the way. He, he, he struggles when he's just dead wide open. He's very good on the, on the move. Aqua, teardrop, too strong. Wiped off the window by Aore Koachea, who averages a half dozen rebounds per game. Gilliard spinning towards the baseline to a cutting Aore Koachea, and he can't bank it in. Cleared by Parag. He just went away from the basket a little bit that time, which is unusual. <laughs> unusual for Aure Koachea. He's always going at the basket. Terrell Brown draws a charge. Does anybody draw charges as well as New Mexico State? I, I'd like to see who it is, if there is. Gilliard drew one earlier. Brown draws this one. What a start for the Yaggies at 18 to three. Under 12 left here at half one. There's a Pascal Siakam jersey here at the Pan Am Center tonight. He was in Phoenix a few nights ago. This former program, the Aggies off to an 18-3 lead against the Lancers of CBU on senior night with the 11.57 left here in half number one. The Aggies looking for their 25th win. Lancers looking for their 22nd win. Lancers have been the best offensive team numbers-wise in the WAC this year. And the Aggies defensively, they've been the best defensive team for us, only giving up 60 per game. And they helped Bankers go to 46 last weekend. Yes, and tonight I will point out that, that uh, CBU is one for nine from the floor, and they've already got five turnovers. And so uh, I, I know Rick Croy is just trying to get his team going, doing anything he can on the sideline to get his team and get this thing turned around. But uh, it's going to be it's going to be difficult if the Aggies uh, keep forcing turnovers like that. It's going to be a long night for for California Baptist. And two of the Lancers' best players are in foul trouble. Two are in Flavors and two are in Aqua. Aqua is on the bench. Flavors back on the floor. Aggies looking for their 19th consecutive win. Six to shoot for Gilliard. Trying to bounce it down low to Aore Koachea. No change in possession. Yep. It would have been one of the timer, but it's Lancer's ball anyway. Well, this, is, this is how Evan Gilliard has changed since his days at UTEP, where he'd go three or four days in a row, uh, three or four days in a row, games in a row without an assist. That time he probably should have shot it, but he's so conscious now of running the team and controlling the tempo. As we see uh, Chris Jans with a brief visit with Jabari Rice. Chris Jans not at full strength yet, but he's getting there. Aggies are pretty much about as healthy as they're going to be all year. Adrian Harris is in uniform tonight, but he has not practiced yet before Vegas, but he is in uniform on senior night. And the Aggies are whistled for a defensive foul as Bull Quoll was hit across his wrist. That was on Gilliard, was it? Yeah. Bull Quill from Australia. One of three Australians for Rick Roy. Boyd will trigger. Lobs it into Para. Transfer from Nebraska, Omaha. Right back to Boyd. Boyd, a runner. Air ball. Queen rips it away from Para. Right back to Aore Koachea, defended by Parag. Sky hook for the big fella. That, that was the old fashioned hook shot. In, in, case, in case you had wondered whether uh, Ivan Aure Koachea had that in his repertoire, he's got everything in, that, in his toolkit down there. It's unbelievable. The Aggies are keeping Dejan Davis in check. He tries the sky hook, and he was way off. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't quite as polished as, as the Spaniards. Brown for three, and the Aggies are ahead by 20. Timeout, Rick Roy. Oh, my. And he's just doing whatever he can to stem the tide here, whether it's get on the officials. But he's, he's, 
uh, you know, his reputation is being remarkably positive. He's not, he's not ripping into the players. He's trying to keep them together now. They're just really confident right now, Russ, on both ends of the floor. I think so, and I think, you know, with Trev Queen healthy, Terrell Brown, who struggled a little early in the in the season, and big Ivan Aure Koachea putting on a clinic with, the, with his low post moves. The Aggies, five of seven on trays. The Lancers are 0 of three. Last Thursday, the Aggies won by a bunch against Grand Canyon. They won by 14, yet they really struggled from three. They were five of 28 from three last Thursday. Christian said he still liked the shot selection. They shot it much better from the arc Saturday, and if they shoot it this well, they're going to be almost impossible to beat in Vegas. That's right. They're really shooting the ball well. But watch Chris Jans here. He drives these guys, Adam. There's no, there's no letting up. Nobody's, no, everybody's got to dig in. There's no taking it easy on any play. And, and at, at, at every inch of the way, he's got to, you know, they've got to produce. With the win, the Yankees would become the third undefeated team in the history of the WAC. The previous two went 14-0. They're looking to become the first team in the history of the conference to go 16-0. And they're playing with no fear. All confidence here tonight from Sean Buchanan and his unit. That's right, but California Baptist, it's, it's a potent offensive squad, and this could get turned around if they, if they get the Aggies stop defensively, stop turning the ball over. They've got five turnovers now. It's just too many. Full court Aggie pressure. Issues for Reed Nottage, who finally gets it in for Bull Quoll. And Queen is picking up him in the backcourts. Now Quoll across midcourt. Lancers one of 11 from the field. This is desperation mode right now. So Aqua's in with two fouls. Buchanan trying to draw a charge. Aqua for three. Put it back, no good, but a foul is called. And Glenn Morrison will shoot two. Well. You see that about once every year where Big Yvonne gets sort of beat to position. I think he felt like, he felt like he'd, uh, the California Baptist player had gone over his back. If Morrison had gone over his back. Let's see if we can. Well, it's too high for me to see. I'm only 5'11". That was a good idea, too, by Buchanan earlier in the possession trying to draw a charge from Aqua, who's playing with two personals. Just couldn't do so. First free throw splashes in for Glenn Morrison, sophomore from Australia. And there's big Will McNair in for the first time tonight for the Aggies. And interesting that when, when the Aggies finally give up an offensive rebound, uh, Chris Jans immediately goes to the big freshman from Philadelphia, Will McNair. McNair's only played 12 combined minutes in the previous three games, so he hasn't played a lot recently. Uh, Ore Coach, he has been playing a ton of minutes. Aggies ahead by 18. What a start in the first 10 minutes plus. Jump stop for Queen, trying to get it off to McNair, and McNair called for reaching in on the hardwood. Well, it's good to see the big guy get down on the floor for that. Lancers haven't made a field goal in over four minutes. They've only made one for the game. Aqua has it poked away into the backcourt, scoops it up there. Picked up by Buchanan. Buchanan's all over it. He's living up to the challenge so far, and he strips him away. That was off his leg. If Buchanan thought so, it's going to stay. Lancers ball. But see, when the Aggies have the ball, oftentimes there'll be eight or ten passes before the ball gets dribbled. And here, that was about 15 dribbles from Milan Aqua. And I, I just don't know if they're going to be able to beat the Aggies with one guy dribbling 15 times. Aqua stripped again, stolen by the senior Buchanan. Aggies, 8 of 14 from the field, 5 of 7 are triples. McNair was wide open. They couldn't find him, though. They're looking for the big fella, just can't get it to him. A 3 for Buchanan is wide left. Offensive rebound, stick back, and one for CJ. Well, Sean Buchanan shoots just often enough to keep the defense honest. 
And C.J. Bobbitt may, may be at his best game in a long time so far, don't you think? I think so. Watch him grab this one. He's a lefty. He sticks it back in. Well, you, you know, the thing that he brings to the Aggies is he's a really smart player. He makes good passes, and he can make. he's probably the best three-point shooter of the big guys, and that just gives him a different dimension. He's making his first start since December 14th against UNM in Albuquerque. That was the previous loss for the Aggies. They haven't lost since then. Bobbitt's been coming off the bench, and Christian gives him a start on senior night. And he's producing with seven. He only averages four and a half a game. Flavors playing with two personals. Downloaded Dave John Davis, who's having a great year. He's from Oakland, a senior post player. He's nearly 10 rebounds a game. Leads the conference in rebounding for the second straight year. The Aggies do not want McNair catching the ball in the arc. Bobbitt for three, missed it short. Wiped off the window by Bull Cole. Aqua's only scored two. He's being hounded by Buchanan, and he earned that deuce right there. Four for the transfer from Washington State. I don't know, though, you know, Adam, if, 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 if I'm California Baptist, I want to get the, you know, get the, they usually get their points out of their offense, and I think they're a little bit frustrated now. A little, a, a, quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one from Milan Aqua. I know that I know that's part of his game, but they, they, the Aggies have really frustrated the CBU. Flair screen was set for Brown, and he drills another two triples for Terrell. Terrell Brown coming off a four for nine game from three last Saturday. He shot the ball well in league play. It goes out of bounds to the Yagis. They lead by 20. Trying to finish the regular season 16 0 in the WAC, looking for their 19th consecutive win. There's Doug Reynolds, the WAC coach of the year. What an atmosphere here tonight for senior night. Home finale, of course. The Yagis looking for their 25th win. Also looking for their 34th straight win versus a WAC opponent. Their last loss in the WAC was against California Baptist last January to open up league play. The Yankees haven't lost in the league since, and they're making a big statement in the first 12 minutes or so. It's a really remarkable accomplishment for New Mexico State. But I would also say, Adam, I think the future looks great for the WAC with, you know, Grand Canyon is up and coming, Cal Bakersfield's up and coming, and, and California Baptist here. Uh-oh. Brown misfires right there. I agree, Russ, with Grand Canyon. A down year this year, but a number of good years before this one, and California Baptist is only rising right now with 21 wins already. Yeah, and, and what about, you know, Seattle is, is is very good. Utah Valley's on the rise, so I, I think it's a terrific, a terrific time to be in the WAC. Contested three for Aqua, spins off, snatched in by McCants. Aqua now two of seven from the field. Pick and roll, Brown and McCants. He'll pop out instead of rolling. Launches outside to Gillier. Evan Gillier connects from three. Well, see what I mean? He's, he's actually he's actually better when he's not wide open. And, and, and the great news about that is, you know, when you play good teams, you're not going to be open as often. Aggies 7 of 12 from bonus distance. They average nine made threes per game. Davis misses point blank. He wanted a foul call. Five out of three for the Aggies. And Queen makes some pay. Unbelievable. And this is quite a statement. And I, I had no inkling that this would happen. You know, with, with Rick Croy, one of the best young coaches in the West. But this is this is a terrific Aggie team. Al is called Arn Terrell Brown. Brown wanted a shove off called Arn Aqua. Felt like he threw out his right arm. Aqua's playing with two personals, so is Flavors. I don't know what choice Rick Croy has. And he's, he's pretty remarkable. He's still pretty positive on the bench. It's just things are not going their way right now. 
The offense has been great, Russ. The Aggies shooting at a very high clip right now, but this defense, I believe, has been even more impressive than the offense. That's right. I mean, it's, 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 it's like the perfect storm for New Mexico State. Aqua will shoot to seventh in the WAC, 84% for the season. Transfer from Washington State, the WAC preseason player of the year, 1,000 point score. He's from Bakersfield, but went to Pullman and transferred to CBU in Riverside. One of the best scorers around the country. He's needed seven shots so far to make two from the field, and now he's two of two on free throws. When Buchanan's been in, he's done a whale of a job on Aqua. The lob for Queen, tapped away, and then pinballs in the hands of Morrison, who leads it ahead for Aqua. Wasn't a bad idea by Evan Gilliard, just the pass was a little short. And now Gilliard defends Aqua. High arcing floater, no good. Two of eight from the field. Field goal percentage isn't great for the season for Aqua. He's under 40%, 38% for the season. Step back three again for Queen. Trap Queen has 13. Well, he's back. What a display he's put on, huh? In front of his family and his friends, all the way from Glen Burnie, Maryland, here for senior night. Finger roll drops in for Aqua. And this is what I mean about Chris Jans. Boy, he was not happy about the defense there. There's no, there's no letting up for Chris Jans. Bounces for Rice. Reverse layup. Pinballs off. Snagged in by Glenn Morrison. Aqua deep three. Aqua has 11. We're starting to see why he's averaging almost 19 a game. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I get it. It's, he's competitive, and the, the team's not playing well. He's trying to do it himself, and he, uh, to a certain extent, he is. But a little post extended. Bobbitt working on the freshman, not in. Wrap around feed for McCants, and he's fouled by Morrison with under four left here in the first half. Trev Queen leading the way. The senior from Glen Burnie, Maryland has 13. The Yaggies with a huge lead here at the Pan Am. The Yaggies ahead by 22. Biggest lead has been 27. 347 left here in the first half at the Pan Am Center. The Yaggies. Currently 9 of 14 from 3. Trev Queen is a perfect 4 of 4. Terrell Brown, 3 of 4. And the Aggies are shooting the 3 even better than what they did last Saturday in Bakersfield when they connected on 13. They're getting good looks, and they've been confident shots from a number of players. Look at Trev Queen. C.J. Bobbitt, 1 of 2. Evan Gilliard has a made three, but it's been Queen, four of four on senior night. He's matched his season average with 13, and this is such a good sign to see Terrell Brown peaking here towards the end of the season. I think that's exactly right. Is we were worried, we were worried. Remember in December we were we were concerned. He just didn't seem to be himself. He had the groin injury, couldn't quite get on track. But part of what's so impressive is the way the Aggies are sharing the ball here. They've only got three turnovers. They've got eight assists, and, and uh, they've, they've kept uh, California Baptist five for 20 shooting for California Baptist. Friendly roll for McCants, who is now nine of 13 from the free throw line in his previous five games. He's only 51% for the season, but he's shooting it much better the last couple of weeks. And he makes both look good on those. Yeah, he's just he's improved dramatically. That's you know one of the things that really helps Aggies. They're just filled with smart, intelligent players. And McCants is you know because of his intelligence, he's improved uh, quite a bit. Ball reversal for Armstrong, the freshman from Tasmania. 
Inside the arc, Davis, and his corner entry is tapped out of bounds by Queen, who's doing it on both ends. Well, that's not Dijon Davis's game. But th this is, you know, they've just, Aggies just have him out of sync. This was David Anwar's scout tonight on the Aggie coaching staff, and well, this team is overly prepared. Armstrong, shallow, McCants taps it, and Bobby collects. I was going to say, somebody owes uh, David Anwar a uh, dinner at Lorenzo's or something. Queen again. Yeah, this short. one was rushed. Aqua scoops it up. A little heat shock there for Trev. Step back three, Aqua. Put it back, no good. Dejon Davis really, really struggling now. One of four from the field. Yeah, he usually, he'd make nine, uh, nine out of ten of those usually. He's out of sync himself. He scored 31 and had 15 rebounds last Saturday. Under three left in half one. And Adam, we haven't talked about uh, UT Rio Grande Valley where California Baptist has to go on Saturday. And, and, and they're a much better team than they were a year or two ago. McCants picks it up, one on the timer and he's bailed out by CBU. Well, Reed Nottage, all the way from Sydney, Australia, but doing all he can, but it's just it's unfortunate to foul with one second on the shot clock. They're gonna check the monitor to see if he got it off before the shot clock went off. Seemed like he did at the first glance, but they will double check to see. Daryl Gelinas, Doran Gottschall, and Eric Anderson are three officials. We had a shot clock violation before the foul. How did you know before he told us, Adam? Intuition, I guess. I okay. don't know. Here we go. So Bobbitt did not hit the rim. McCants did hit the rim. We couldn't really tell in that angle there if it was before or after the shot clock went off. And of course, if it was a shot clock violation, then no foul on Reed Nottage. They're going to say that McCann's did get it off. So he's going to shoot two free throws. Let's see if he can run it back, what he just did. Two of two. Three of three. <laughs> Is Johnny McCann's all of a sudden Jabari Rice on free throws? Yep. Sean Buchanan checks back in for the Chicago native and Simeon grad, Evan Gilliard. How about that? Four of four. That starts shooting them with his eyes closed like MJ. Well, let's not get overconfident now. And 42 and to 16. Yeah, that's right. Davis again lost it again. He's turned it over a number of times. Ahead for Queen. Behind his back for McCann. Put on a show, Trev Queen. Well, it's just it's indicative of how well these guys play together, Adam. He had every right to shoot that one. He was out ahead on the he could have got fouled. But just the, the, the clever backwards bounce pass behind the back. He wanted a replay. Now they're showing it on the video board. He was eyeing up the video board looking for a replay. Wow. 28 point advantage. Wow. Well, that's an early candidate for Whataburger play of the game for sure. Boyd stripped away. Uh -oh. Queen again. Hammers it home. Well, it's pandemonium here. I can, I can hardly hear myself talk. And look at the Aggie bench, guys, who aren't, who aren't playing, haven't played much all year. They're all on their feet. Pulling for the Aggies to make history here. Scooped up by Aqua. 
And that's a blocking foul on Johnny McCants with 1-12 left in the half. Well, let's, let's mark that down as, as, as uh, Cal Baptist gets a break. And there's this... He's not going to pass all of them behind his back for assists. He might have to dunk some of them. What do you think, Russ? The behind the back pass or the dunk for Whataburger play of the game? Well, it's early yet. And, and, and uh, speaking, speaking of Whataburger, by the way, I just want everyone to know I'm going without dinner tonight. I, I thought there'd be food in the media room. There wasn't. I'm, I'm doing this on an empty stomach. But I'm so excited, I, I, can, I hardly notice. I'm not hungry yet. I'll be honest, I did not think with 112 left in the first half it would be 46-16. No, a 30-point 30, 30 lead at halftime. And I just, you know, I just think it's one of those nights where everything's going wrong for, for CBU and everything's going right for New Mexico State. That snaps a three-minute scoreless drought for CBU. They're shooting 20%. The Aggies 9 of 15 from 3 and shooting almost 60% from the field. Now, you mark my words, Adam. At halftime, when, when Chris Jans goes up there, he will find some something, to, some imperfection that he wants ironed out on the way to the locker room. Hand off to McNair. Leans in. Can't put it in. Skips around. Bobbitt going for it, and he runs into the donor row. Great hustle again for CJ, who's been diving on the floor all night. Just couldn't quite save it. Yeah, I do think it's CJ Bobbitt's best game in a long time. Same goes for Trek Queen. He has 15. Flavor is trying to get rolling here. That's his first made field goal in his fifth field goal attempt. He averages 14 a game. He's the most lethal three-point shooter in the WAC numbers-wise. That's his 88th made triple of the season. And now the Aggies can have the final shot of the half. And they've led by as many as 30. Micah Aqua seems to be... Sorry, Milan Aqua he seems to be talking to Sean Buchanan. I'm not sure what he's saying. Sean Williams for C.J. Bobbitt, and his three is too strong. Heck of a half for the Aggies. Trev Queen with 15. Aqua has over half of the points for the Lancers. The Aggies shot 56% from the field, 9 of 16 from three, and they're seeking perfection. And Queen is leading the way. Halftime comes up next. They've been a fun group to coach. Um, I think the thing that stands out the most to me is how competitive they are with one another on the practice floor, um, but how they love and root for one another on game day. Um, there's just a vibe in that locker room that, that's positive, that, um, you know, they really root for one another. When they're not in the game, that they, uh, that they want the other uh, person to do well, even if it's a, a position that's similar to theirs, that if knowing that if that person doesn't play well, they'll probably come out. And I just don't feel that, that that's the case with, with these guys. And, and that's special, especially in this day and age. It's very, very special, and I'm proud of, uh, of them for that and proud of our culture that that's what it's saying right now. Um, hopefully that will continue for us when they leave. Um, but we're going we're gonna to lose a big core of uh, who this program is and who this program has been um, for the last two to three years because of these seniors and what they've done to this program. Underway here in half two. Now Clayton Henry is listed as a senior, but the Aggies are confident he will get a medical redshirt for this year. So... Henry should be back next year. The Yankees are not having him go through senior day activities here today. Flavors thought he was hit or he thought it was tipped in it's Aggie ball. Another good sign, Russ, is A.J. Harris is on the Aggie bench. He's in uniform. He's not available tonight, but his boot is off. And there's a chance A.J. Harris could play in Vegas. Well, and he was, I saw him walking onto the court. I was just delighted to see him without a cast on. He was walking without limping. Oop. Queen had that tipped out of bounds by Flavors. Now, he hasn't practiced yet, but he'll have a few more days to get ready for next Thursday when the Yankees open up 
in the quarterfinals at the Orleans Arena. So if you see A.J. Harris in Vegas, do not be shocked. And he will go through senior night activities when the game concludes. All seniors on the floor right now. Buchanan fading away. He gets the rim. Offensive rebound for Daore Koachea. Spinning on Parag. Left it short, but a foul is called. Well, Aggie's just, just another break. You know, you just have to put up a bad shot, but it bounces right to right to Big Ivan Aure Koachea. And here's Parag doing all he can do, but... The Aggies were led by their three-point shooting for a good portion of the first half, but early on it was Aure Koachea who was setting the tone. Yeah, what a great, great career he's had. Uh, just, yeah, just, you know, just he's so versatile, does so many things well. He's smart and he's tough. And he usually makes his free throws. 75% in whack play. Single digits in three straight. He averages 11 a game. He averages 14 per game in conference games. Score 20 in Riverside in early January in the first matchup which is a little surprising because he's going up against a big post player. Six foot 11, Zach Parag has been defending Aure Koache in both matchups. The Lancers are hopeful they can get Dejon Davis rolling here in this half. Aqua crossing up Arne Buchanan and he's fouled. Those two guys have been going at it all night. Well, Milan Aqua is understandably frustrated, although he's played well you know, after the first few minutes. He's been playing pretty well. He's a big guard, Russ. He's six foot three, 195. Shoots it well. Good taking the ball to the rim as well, and he shoots free throws at a high clip, 84%. Statistically, it appears he's the best guard in the conference. What have you seen the first 21 minutes? Well, just he, he started off slowly, and by the by the time he got on track, the Aggies were in such command and control. Uh, so I, it's you know, it's, it's a, I don't think we're seeing the real Milan Aqua tonight. I think he's a better player than what we've seen, and clearly Cal Baptist is a better team than they're playing tonight. He seems to have a running dialogue, though, with Sean Buchanan, Milan Aqua. A little trash talking doesn't hurt. Trav Queen with it. Ball screen from Aore Koachea. Bobby to catch and fire three. Uh, Ore Koachea tips it to himself. Reverse layup no good, and he'll shoot free throws again. Now, I, I know the Aggie Vision crew got that. They'll run that back. But watch Ivan Ore Koachea. He's turned backwards when the shot goes up, and he still is able to anticipate where the ball goes. He was fa he was actually facing the court, facing, you know, with his back to the baseline when the shot went up, then spun and still found where the ball bounced. And then he's always on balance because he's so strong. He's, yeah, he's, he's got terrific balance for a big guy. And, and he's, he's a, as strong as, a, we can say about the Spanish guy, he's strong as a bull, right? Mm -hmm. Final game in this building for Ivan Aore Coachea, who early on in his career, and he's only been here for two years, he quickly became a fan favorite. And I think he'll go down as one of the most well-liked players in program history. Well, that's right. And... Surprise, he speaks Spanish. Transfer in from Indian Hills Community College. Elbow jumper for Aqua. Another quality rebound for C.J. Bobbitt, who now has five boards. Bobbitt for three. Seven points, five rebounds, 19 minutes for Bobbin. Who's peaking here at the right time before Vegas. Shooting confidently as well. Good high hedge there for Bobbin. Right back to Davis, working on CJ. He spins and Aure Koachea meets him. Flavors, penetrates to the rim. Foul is called on Queen. Aggies felt like it should have been a jump ball. This is 
Yeah, well, he got a little arm initially, I think, Ross. Yeah, maybe b before it got too deep. Brandon Boyd hasn't scored yet for CBU. He averages 11 a game. This is Flavors off the heel, and it pops over the backboard. Flavors quiet, Boyd quiet. Those two guys in particular, and also Davis. It's been Aqua who has scored 13 of the 22 for CBU. This is a team that averages 81 points per game. They only have 22, almost three minutes into half two against Chris Giantinis. Tight, stifling, pesky Aggie D. That's right, and uh, is relentless Aggie D. Very active hands, everybody's helping. The Aggie defense was really, really sharp in both wins last week on the road at Grand Canyon and Bakersfield. Abbott back out for Buchanan. Under 10 to shoot for the senior from Durant, Mississippi. Wraparound pass, looking for McCants. Tipped and stolen by CBU. Aqua zigzags into the front court. And right as he turns around, Buchanan right there in his jersey. Queen diving on the post entry. And it trickles <laughs> into the Lancers bench. Well, and, and that's what I mean about Chris Jans' team is Trevor Gwynn Queen, as great as a scorer he was in junior college, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't uh, known for his great defense, but he's become a really good defender for now. Look at that. You know, that's guarding a guy who's three or four inches bigger. So a really good message earlier today on social media, on Twitter, from former Aggie assistant coach and current DePaul assistant, Mark Shu, who knows Trev Queen well, and he tweeted and said, I want to say congrats to Trev on his senior night and for turning into a really coachable player. He's allowed Chris Giants to coach him. And Chris Giants will coach him hard, and he allows that, and it's turned him into a better person and a better player. Well, that's a nice quote from Mark Shu. He's matured a lot during his two years. Trap Queen. McCants has to hurry. Bob it from the corner. And it's picked up by Aqua. Aqua is doing it all offensively for the Lancers, and he scoops it home. Aqua has 15. CBU only has 24. Lead cut down to 25 for the Aggies. It's been as high as 30. Scoreless drought is almost three minutes. Bobbitt in the post, and one again for CJ, his second three-point play tonight. The Aggies are working their offense through Bobbitt a bit here on senior night. All Aggies ahead, Bob. Chris Giants trying to join an exclusive club of coaches that have gone undefeated in the WAC. It's been done twice before. Billy Tubbs at TCU in the late 90s. Rick Majerus at Utah in the late 90s as well. You knew the late great Rick Majerus. That's a pretty good club of coaches if Chris Giants can finish this one off. It's, it's really remarkable. It, it, it just in, pretty early in his tenure, you know, he hasn't been here for very long and it's really, really an accomplishment. Aggies make history. Aggies trying to go to 16-0 in the WAC. Those two teams finished 14-0. They were playing a 14-game schedule, so now the Aggies with two extra trying to do it and do what no other WAC program has ever done. With all the injuries. It well, wasn't supposed to be like this a couple months ago. No, and it wasn't supposed to be like this tonight either. I, I thought it was going to be, uh, and, it, and there's still 15 minutes left. Anything can happen. But uh, Rick Croy, who's resolutely upbeat, is, is uh, having to do all he can to, to stay upbeat. California Baptist for the year, averaging 81 points per game, leads the WAC. They've shot it so well all year, 38% from three, and they've just struggled in all facets offensively tonight. Two of 12 from three, Boyd travels, and he's been scoreless. He's a big part of their offense. He averages 11 a game. 
and he can't get rolling offensively. No, he seems he, he seems like he's completely out of out of sync. And you know, we've talked about Sean Buchanan and his defense a lot. One of the things that he's very underrated at Sean Buchanan is he's really athletic. He's quick and he can jump. And so it's not it's not just that he's that he's uh, maybe the smartest player on the floor, if not the best shooter. Buchanan, like many of the seniors, a lot of family and friends in town tonight. And his older brother, Shaq, who plays in the G League, former Murray State racer great, he surprised Sean at the game tonight. Sean did not know that Shaq was coming. He surprised him, and that's a cool moment for that family that's been all basketball the last countless of years. Gilliard will trigger. Rice was curling. They lob it in for Aure Coachea on the arc. Omar Lowe is in for the first time for CBU. Seldom used. He's a redshirt senior from LA. Brown lost it, and then Lowe traveled with it in front of Chris Jans. Lancers will play in the postseason, by the way. It just won't be Vegas and or the NCAAs. They're ineligible for the conference tournament and the NCAAs. They're ineligible for NCAA sanctioned events. So they could play in the CBI again, which they played in a year ago, or the CIT. And they've won 21 games. It's been a really good year. They'll play in the postseason yeah, somewhere. Got, they absolutely have to. In fact, they'll probably host a postseason game. It's been a quiet night for Jabari Rice, who did not make a field goal last Saturday. Dishes it off. One-handed dunk. Ivan Aure Koachea. Rice hasn't scored yet, Russ. Well, it's senior night. And the Aggies are up 30. He'll have his senior night himself in a couple years. Rice is top 10 in the whack and scoring. Nothing yet. Boyd, flavor, sidestep three. Tapped out by Armstrong. He reaches over the back of Johnny McCants. Well, that's where McCants is so smart. He's three inches bigger than he's three inches bigger than Armstrong, but he knew he had to keep him off the boards there. Now Rice last Saturday, Russ, he did not make a field goal, but he did score four points. Christian said earlier this week, he said he felt like Jabari, even though he didn't score in a field goal, still played well. He said he impacted the game in other ways, which was a really good sign. Well, it says a lot about Chris Jans. He's not only looking at the score sheet to see who scores. Is, is Jabari Rice has improved dramatically defensively. We've, we've talked about him quite a bit this year. He may be the most improved player in the conference. Gilliard all the way to the rim. High arcing finger roll is good with a strong hand for the Chicago native. Five now for Evan Gilliard. Boyd in the key, pitch out for Armstrong. Great box out for Aore Koachea, who grabs his seventh rebound. He's approaching a double-double. Aggie lead is 32, just outside of seven minutes into half two. Extra pass, Aore Koachea jumps to pass for Brown from the wing, and he's hammered on the three. He will shoot three free throws. Freshman mistake on Trey Armstrong. How about the unselfishness again? Well, it's just time after time. When you, when you, you know, I think it's the hardest thing to do to, to get 12 teenagers to not be selfish. I'm working on, on the one at home I've got. And, and, and here Chris Jans can do it with a dozen with a dozen teenagers. Brown joins Queen, Bobbitts, and Aore Koachea in double figures. This is turning into a whack tournament tune-up game, which we did not think would happen. We thought this would be very close. Well, and actually, Adam, I'll go on record as saying that 
it's not they're going to have to overcome this and they, they we don't want the Aggies going into the WAC tournament thinking it'll all be easy because it won't be easy they can get beat in a lot of different ways 9-0 Aggie run bull bull for three he's a 44 percent three-point shooter 6-7 lanky forward from Australia bull cool one of the best names around the country step in three for Gilliard and he answers cool Aggies trying to go to 25 and 6. Bodies flying everywhere. Williams and Armstrong collided. The foul will be on Sean Williams. We know Evan Gilliard can shoot. Did it uh, a lot of times in high school at Simeon in Chicago. Yeah, and I think what he's proved here is, you know, he sh he, he was probably shooting too much down in El Paso. He didn't have the in fairness, he didn't have the, the uh, support that he has here with New Mexico State, but he, he's completely revamped his game. It, 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 it's, it, I, the change that he's made in his game is really unprecedented. Turnaround jumper for Brandon Boyd, his first points of the night. Idaho State transfer who averages 11 a game. Long season for Boyd at CBU after three at Idaho State. Right back to Rice from Aore Coachea. Kick and roll to Ivan. Up and under with the finger roll. Just one more move in case, in case he forgot any of them in his time at New Mexico State. Away to the rim. Missed assignment there for the Aggies. Gilliard thought Rice would switch. And the two guys were not on the same page. Four in a row for Brandon Boyd. That last move, Russ, was that another move in the toolkit for I, Yvonne? Oh, I'd never seen that one before. I haven't either. Let's see what he does here. Triple team, diving McCants, gets it to Aore Koachea. Somebody has to shoot it, it's Sean Williams. Tip up and no good. Tip jam for Johnny. Wow, Onyate High School, local favorite, Johnny McCants. Brandon Boyd going to work, turnaround jumper. It's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff tonight for CBU. Yeah, and some of it's out of, some of it's of course a great Aggie defense and some of it's just frustration. Sean Williams transition triple. Well, I'm telling you now, Adam, mark my words, they're going to need, the Aggies will need Sean Williams to play well in the WAC tournament if they're going to win it. Just every every bit of firepower is going to help. I'm with you, Russ. And Williams did not play last Saturday in Bakersfield. Coach's decision. A lot of minutes tonight for Sean Williams. Splitting defenders. Boyd, foul call. Aggies ahead by 37. Who saw this one coming? These are the top two teams in the WAC. The Aggies trying to finish conference play 16-0. Johnny and Yvonne helping the cause. Has been all Aggies from the jump. The top offensive team in the WAC versus the top defensive team in the WAC. But in this one, the Aggies have looked like the best team in the WAC on both ends of the floor. <laughs> And, and, uh, and every other place, they've just done it all tonight. And it's been just uh, a stunner of a, of, of a game so far. California Baptist ineligible for the postseason because of the transition to Division One. They have 21 wins. They are 10 and four in the WAC. Trev Queen scored 15 in the first half. He has not scored so far in half two though. Pitch out to Flavors. He's had a tough night. Farron Flavor is now one of seven from three, and he is a league best 44% for the year in over 200 tries. He doesn't miss much, but he's missed a lot tonight. Balanced scoring effort all night for the Aggies. Queen led the way in the first half. It's been 
a joint effort in half two. Led by Aore Koachia. Queen made that, it will not count. He's got another one, don't worry. He's got a couple saved up. Yeah, Aggie's already in the bonus. So Aore uh, Koachia will shoot one and one. Three of four tonight. I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Russ. Which senior do you feel like will be the hardest to replace going into next year? I know Boy, it's a tough that's question. Really, that's really putting me on the spot. That's not fair. Uh, off the top of my head, I'd say the, the big Spaniard, just because uh, e big Ivan Aure Koechea, can he can score inside. And it's hard to find big guys who can score inside in Division One. But yet, how can they ever replace Trevlin Queen? Yet, how could they ever replace Terrell Brown? Sean Buchanan. Yeah, I mean, the, the ultimate and, glue guy. The, ult yeah, the ultimate glue guy. He's a sort of, remember Shane Battier that played yeah. the NBA for so many years? Sure. He never had any kind of stats, and his team always won. And that's, that's who Sean Buchanan is. Except a little shorter. Scoreless round over two minutes for CBU. I'm, I'm not, a, you can't put me on the spot asking me uh, difficult questions like that. It's a 37 point game. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me think about it some more. Lob pass down low to McCants, who saves it from going out of bounds. Post entry is tipped and stolen. Bull tipped it away. Boyd leads the break, bounces for Flavors. It was altered. Put back is good for Armstrong. Let's see if they call the foul on the layup for Flavors or on the putback for Armstrong. It's going to be on the layup right here. So no basket for Armstrong. And Flavors will shoot two, and California Baptist having to earn everything they get tonight. I will say this, Russ. I think before the year, if I would have posed that question to you, you might have said A.J. Harris. Well, the Aggies <laughs> have had to deal without Harris for pretty much the entire season. Yeah, I mean, A.J. Harris was a starter. Clayton Henry was a starter. Then they had Trevlin Queen and Terrell Brown both hurt quite a bit. That's what's, what, that's uh, maybe the biggest accomplishment for Christian. Is he, he's done it all with, through all these injuries and, uh, that they've had. Will McNair clears after the favors miss. All Aggies the entire way. The Aggies led the break. 46 to 20. They've outscored the Lancers 22 to 12 here in half two. Lead has grown to 36 to high post set with McNair and McCants. You don't see this very often. McNair trying to set a ball screen for Johnny on the perimeter. They bounce it to Williams. Everything was out of whack. You had Williams in the interior. You had McNair and McCants in the perimeter. Yes, it was sort of the world turned upside down there. Sean Williams scores under the basket. Boyd is blocked by Buchanan and then picks it up. And he yells to the crowd, get on your feet. <laughs> Williams dribbles it off his foot, and then he scoops it up on the perimeter. The shot clock reset. Reset to 30. They're going to check the monitor. There was never a change in possession, so they'll check the shot clock. And they'll also send us to break with the media. Believe it or not, it is 70 to 32 here at the Pan Am in the regular season finale for the Aggies. Complete effort tonight for Chris Giants and the Aggies in their final tune-up before the WAC tournament next week in Vegas. Trying to finish undefeated in the conference and the Aggies haven't just done it on offense where they've been spectacular. They've also done it, Russ, on defense. The Aggies have collected three blocks. They have six steals. They're scoring points off turnovers. They've been great defensively for the third straight game. That's right, and it's been a team effort at every turn. It's the team defense, the sharing the ball, uh, and just putting on a clinic. A lot, of def a lot of deflected passes, active hands for the Aggies, great ball pressure. The Aggies have scored 16 points off turnovers. The Lancers have scored just one point off an Aggie turnover. And of course, it's been Sean Buchanan who's led the charge on defense. That's right, and Aggies with only six turnovers, 
and, uh, and a couple of them have come in the last few minutes, so they were playing pretty close to mistake-free offensively. Meanwhile, on offense, the Yankees have made eight of their previous 10 shots for the field, and they're shooting 53%, 11 of 23 on threes. Sean Williams, fadeaway jumper, might have been partially blocked, and it's picked up underneath by CBU. A lot of minutes for Williams off the bench after not playing last Saturday in Bakersfield. McNair defending Morrison well out beyond the arc. A three-pointer from the wing is good. Second made three for Bull Pull, Redshirt Jr. from Australia. Well, Cole has shown he can shoot the ball. I think he's got, he's got a big future, too. You know, Russ, he's 6'7". He shoots it well from the arc, and he's from Australia. He reminds me of New Mexico forward McQuatch Malawash in that regard. Well, that's a, there, there seems to be a pipeline from the west, you know, from uh, Australia to the western United States, with especially St. Mary's, which is might be where Rick Croy got the idea. Oh! Johnny McCants! A dunk on a missed three for Queen. Where did he come from? I, can, I, can, I cannot believe it. I've never seen a dunk on a missed three like that. They just uh, bounced so hard. And McCance was just unbelievable lift. And he gets the rebound, too. Lob for Queen, and he hammers it home. Put on a show, young fella. And he just tossed his headband into the stands. I mean, the crowd is electric. The Aggies are electric. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Queen again. He lobs it to himself. <laughs> They're going bananas. I cannot believe it. <laughs> and, and, and the big challenge on the Aggie bench. Queen, Queen is holding his hand to his ear saying he can't hear. Here comes Buchanan. Lob for Queen, and he tried dunking it left-handed. Wasn't the pass wasn't quite there, but McQueen brilliantly switched, you know, switched hands. And Rick Croy wants uh, to calm things down here. And no wonder. Oh my word! You think they're ready for Vegas? 76-35 Aggies. Nineteen for Queen. 76-35 Aggies ahead by 41 with under six left in half two. Time now for New Mexico State student athlete to the game. Tonight we recognize Tyler Deal from Aggie Men's Golf and Leah Mosher from Aggie Volleyball. Deal of 4 0 student in marketing, Mosher a 394 in secondary education. New Mexico State University, be bold, shape the future. We're trying to sort out what we just saw here, this previous sequence at the Pan Am Center. Trev Queens had a, a few highlight reel dunks in this one. Check that out on a lob for Sean Buchanan, perfectly placed. Tossed his headband in the stands after that one. Not too shabby. Johnny McCants fired up as well. He tossed it off the backboard to himself after looking at his bench. <laughs> does, that, does he get the assist for that also? You typically don't see this in a game situation. No, You'll see this the dunk show. in a rec league game or yeah. in a pickup game, not in a conference game like Trev Queen just showed. And now he knows he's on the video board. Unbelievable. You and think he's okay now? You think the knee's okay? Yeah, and, and, and what about McCance's dunk off the, off the, off the, off the missed three-pointer? That, that was sensational too. But there's, there's your MVP of the conference tournament last year, Trevlin Queen. 
Queens family is in town from Glen Burnie, Maryland. They don't get to see him play live a whole lot, and he is putting on a show for them. 19 points on 7 of 11 from the field, 4 of 6 from 3. This team could not be peaking any more into Vegas. And they couldn't be any more confident on both ends of the floor heading to Vegas. That's right. But I, I and I think Chris Jans knows this as well as anyone, and the Aggies do too, that, that anyone can beat them. If they, if they don't come to play every single night in Vegas, uh, they could get beat. And that's why that guy is relentless, because he, know, he knows that anything, anything can happen. I wouldn't worry about them being overconfident. I, I think some people watching this might say a little bit too overconfident, potentially. I don't see it. Ivan Aore Koichi, a done. The final time he will leave Lou Henson Court. What a career, huh? Three-pointer is no good for Micah Robinson, a redshirt senior from Rancho Cucamonga. And I say that I don't think they'll be overconfident into next week because this is how they play. They feed off the crowd energy. And there's going to be 3,000 or so Aggie fans in WAC Vegas, and they'll have the home crowd. Yes, I think, I think that's right. And also, the, the Aggies are, are, are deep enough that, you know, on... on you know, three or four of them could beat you on any given night, and it, w it could uh, be a rotating cast of characters. It's very much, a, very much a team effort. We've seen Rick Roy a few times and his bench. They just look stunned right now. I don't think anybody expected this. We felt like it would be a close game, and it hasn't been since the first two minutes or so. No, but I'll stick with what I said earlier. I, th I think the future of California Baptist looks good. It's a, b a beautiful campus. He's a terrific young coach. And this is just one of those nights. I don't think this is indicative at all of, of, of California Baptist's future. They've been more successful during their transition to Division I than anybody. 16 wins last year, 21 wins so far this year. Rice for three off the back rim. Boyd the rebound, and then in the hands of Robinson. They will have one more regular season game left Saturday against UTRGV as they try to finish in second in the WAC. Boyd switches in the three. It was just one of those nights for California Baptist offensively, Russ, where outside of Aqua, nobody had anything going. Their go-to guys, and, and usually they're balanced. Usually it's Davis, Boyd, Aqua, and Flavors in double figures, and that has not been the case in this one. That's right. That, that's right. It just, it just it wasn't wasn't just one uh, California Baptist Lancer out of sync. It was the, the whole bunch of them. And I think you have to credit New Mexico State for for most of that. Rashman Trey Armstrong blocked away by the big ball of Will McNair. Everyone having some fun. The Yagis three minutes and 53 seconds away from becoming the first program in the history of the WAC to finish 16 and 0. There's always something to play for. You know, with the streaks that we got going on, we're certainly aware of those, and uh, they'll end someday, but um, why not try to extend them as long as we can? And I'm not a believer that, you know, you, a team that's on a streak needs to lose a game in order to refocus, recenter. I thought the Utah Valley game and how close it was and, and we could have easily, should have, would have lost that game was our reset button. Uh, we've gotten better because of it. You know, uh, the last three games were probably our best three games in a row we've had all year long. So um, impressed. You know, I wouldn't use the word impressed. Uh, happy. I mean, happy that, that they've stayed focused and kept working and are playing better now. Aggies looking for their 19th straight win. Buchanan was out of bounds when he touched it. The Aggies closer to the longest win streak in program history as Terrell Brown goes off for the final time here at Lou Henson Court. Catch and shoot three for Robinson splashes in. The longest win streak in program history is 21. This would be 19. The Aggies could get 22 straight if they win all three in Vegas, and that would be the longest win streak in program history. 
Second longest is 20. The Aggies will be one away from that after tonight is done. Pick and pop three for Johnny McCants. <laughs> A little bow and arrow. There it is. Pull up for Boyd, who's had a good half. He's up to nine now after going scoreless in the first 25 minutes of the game. The Aggies will call a timeout to get a sub in. Evan Gilliard will come in for Trev Queen. What a career. Yes, MVP of the league tournament last year. Overcame a little small knee problem this year. You might not find a player who grew more on and off the floor during his time here than Trev Queen. He's gotten really close to his head coach, Chris Giant. He's been coachable. And here comes last year at this time, we weren't really talking a ton about Trev Queen. This is kind of when he started to come on last year. And then, of course, he was able to bust out in the WAG tournament, earning MVP honors. And here comes uh, Tennessee Owens, maybe for the shooter. I think Tennessee will get Sean Buchanan here. That's my guess. Chris Giants trying to give each senior their time to come out of the game and get acknowledged by the crowd. The ultimate glue guy. Sean Buchanan, C.J. Bobbitt will come out. Tennessee Owens comes in for him. Maybe saved his best for last, Russ. Well, he, he's been a terrific blend player for the Aggies, C.J. Bobbitt, the University of Denver transfer. Oh, Denver University, sorry. Always nice when the score differential is like this on senior night, so you can get the seniors out. This is when I got in the game, Adam, at, at, at North Park College, as you probably remember. The old D3 walk-on, right? That's right, but I, I scored the 100th point a couple times in, right. in, in blowout wins. And now Bryce Rewalt will come in for Sean Buchanan. Well, Sean Buchanan, who hasn't scored a lot of points, but he is the ultimate leader. I'm standing for this one, Adam. I just think, you know, he's living proof that, that it's more the game than scoring points. I mean, he's been here the longest with Chris Giannis. Buchanan playing in his 100th career game tonight, and he made his 15th start of the season. He really had to step up this year, didn't he, with the yes. injury to A.J. Harris? Yes, and he, he, he kept coming through time after time, often with the game on the line. Well, the Aggies have a small lineup in here, except for big Will McNair. High players and double figures. Let's see if the walk arms can get a look. Bryce Rewalt and Tennessee Owens. Best friends, high school teammates at Centennial High. Here's Tennessee Owens. Son of the director of operations, Casey Owens. Gilliard to Owens. Williams, fade away three from the wing. Pinball is off. McNair is hit, no call. He had a foul is called, and I think Bryce Rewald will be the shooter here. Well, the fans wanted Tennessee Owens to shoot it, but he wasn't going to shoot a bad shot. You can't shoot a bad shot when your father's the coach, or one of the coaches. One and one upcoming for Bryce Rewald, who began this year as a team manager. The Aggies, of course, had tons of injuries. Rewald will lay it in. That should be a basket. That should count and will. Bryce Rewald with the hustle, beating the Lancers to the basketball. Well, How about that? Yeah, beat, beat, four, beat four of them to the basketball at about five foot 11. That might be our Whataburger player of the game, too. We've got a lot of choices to make that. Rewald hasn't played tonight, but he's staying locked in. 
Gilliard gets Armstrong in the air. In the key, out for Owens. A buck 20 left here in the second half. 83 to 48. Lob for McNair, comes down with it. Oh, Gilliard with two on the timer. McNair, McNair grabs it, falls to the hardwood, great hustle. Great rebounds by Will McNair there. Three misses for Robinson. That man is a genius. Chris Jans, <laughs> 25th win of the season. 28 in year one, 30 in year two, 25 and counting in year three. And he will join an exclusive club with Billy Tubbs and Lake Great Rick Majerus. Three walks, three is no good. Tip duck there for Nottage. Utah went undefeated in the WAC in 98-99. They were coached by Rick Majerus. TCU went undefeated in the WAC. 97-98, coached by Billy Tubbs. 2019-2020, the first team to ever go 16-0 in the WAC. Perfection for Chris Jans and his program. Incredible. No question, Russ. This was the most complete game all year. Not even close, right? It's also the most exciting and most fun as we see Trevlin Queen run back down onto the court after going and hugging his friends from home. And here comes Chris Jans. Better ask him. The Yankees finished 16-0 in the WAC. The first ever WAC school to do it. And they join TCU and Utah as the third team to go undefeated in WAC history. They win by 33. They led in this one by as many as 41 on senior night. Coach Giants has joined us. Most complete game all year, not even close. Maybe, without watching the video, it's certainly in the conversation. We've been playing some good basketball, you know. Uh, on the road, I thought our two best back-to-back -back games was GCU and Bakersfield, and I was very curious if we could come home and do it uh, again, and obviously they did. Um, they had great energy. Our defense has gotten better and better, and, and they're hanging their hat on defensive rebounding right now, which is good to see. You thought last Thursday Trev Quinn got his bounce back against Grand Canyon. He showed that off tonight. Yeah, he looked good. You know, um, the timing couldn't be better for us and for him, you know, for him to feel closer to what he was prior to the surgery, and uh, I think this will just springboard him going forward uh, heading into WAC Vegas. Did he feel like this was your third straight elite defensive game as a team? I don't know, that's a special word. You know, it was definitely very good. Um, you know, we're trending in the right direction. You know, we got a whole week now to, to get healthy and, and tweak, you know, here and there and, and try to get ready, uh, you know, to play where it's sudden death, and it's a whole different feeling, and we try to put as much pressure on these kids all year long. Um, so they, when they get there, it doesn't feel foreign to them, and hopefully that'll be the case. Lastly, Coach, what can you say about these six seniors? Man, they're the core of who we are. You know, since we've been here, certainly we've had others that have impacted our program, but to have that big a, a class, um, you know, including Clayton, you know, obviously with his injury, you know, he'll be coming back. But um, they're, they're our culture. They're our core, and I couldn't be happier for them to be able to close their careers out in the Pan Am in this fashion. Coach, congrats. Tonight was fun. It was fun. Thanks, Adam. That's Aggie head coach, Chris Jans. The Aggies perfect in the WAC. They finished 16-0, the first ever team in the WAC to do it, joining Utah and TCU as undefeated teams in the WAC, but they both went 14-0. The Aggies will be the one seed in WAC. They will play the eight seed, Chicago State, 
in the quarterfinals on Thursday. So now a stretch off for the Aggies before they get ready for Vegas next week. And they will play Chicago State in the quarterfinals on day one next Thursday. What a night here at the PM. They're going to start senior night activities when we come back. The Aggies win by 33, and they achieve perfection here tonight. Oftentimes, we'll use the phrase that the program is worth the price of admission or Trev Queen is worth the price of admission. They should have charged like $30 for tickets tonight. This was special. It's it's a great entertainment value. It always is at New Mexico State, but what an exciting game. Just, just un unbelievable. I would have never predicted it would happen, and I was just thrilled. I was jumping out of my seat. Did you see me? You did. Yeah. I, I was moving Twice. pretty good for my age. Yeah, I thought, unbelievable. The Aggies were at their best in their regular season finale in many different aspects of this game. The defense was really good. I said elite to Chris Giants. He said, well, that's a pretty strong word, but the defense was really good for the third straight game. I'll I'll just say it for him then. I'll have to correct Chris Giants for the first time. It was elite defense tonight. And offensively, the Aggies shoot 50% from the field. A lot of transition buckets, a lot of points off turnovers. CJ Bobbin was in on the act. Everyone was contributing. This was a night, Russ, where Jabari Rice did not score. Johnny McCants only scored 11, yet a number of guys contributed, and the Aggies end up scoring 83. That's right, and Jabari did a good job on, on uh, Milan Aqua for much of the first half. 19 for Queen. How about that pass right there to Johnny McCants? There was a stretch in the half, and it, this was the stretch where Trev Queen just took over the game. That's right, and he did it with great enthusiasm and personality. He's, he just, just was just bursting out of his out of his uniform. Another solid performance for Ivan Aorekoechea, who scored 13 points, had eight rebounds. Johnny McCants had a couple of put-back dunks. He scored 11, three of four from the field for Johnny, who was playing high above the rim all day, and Sean Buchanan was fighting his teammates all day. Cannon finished with three helpers. I guess that counts as a helper to himself for Trev Queen, I, maybe? I'll, I'll give him the assist and the rebound on that one, Adam. 19 points for Queen in 27 minutes, his best game since returning from injury when he injured his knee just over a month ago. What jumps out at you here, Russ? Well, the Aggies with uh, 15 assists to five assists. I mean, they just, as much as they dominated, uh, they, really, they share the ball. It's always a team effort. And, and that as much as anything, I think, uh, you know, and they kept their turnovers down low. And, uh, but it's just, there's all kinds of stats to talk about. Individually, the Aggies had five players in double figures led by Queen. He had 19, 11 for Brown, 11 for McCants, 10 for Bobbitt, uh, Oreko at Shea, 13. And for a good part of this game, Milan Aqua was the offense for CBU. Yeah, he was there. He was their only option, and even he was frustrated. Yeah, he could. He didn't get going until the game was nearly out of reach for, for uh, California Baptist. I don't think we've ever had this many options for Whataburger playing the game. So our fine TV truck here in our final basketball TV game of the season just put together a montage. Here's a steal for Buchanan. And then a behind-the-back pass by Queen with eyes behind his head. And then Queen, the next play, a dunk that fired everybody up here at the Pan Am Center. And a lob for Trev Queen from Sean Buchanan. And which was the one where he tossed his headband into the stands? This one. Yep, there you okay. go. <laughs> and that was before he threw the ball to himself. So without the headband on that one, had a headband earlier, somebody got a souvenir, and the Aggies are rolling right into Vegas, Russ. Un unbelievable, it was, just, it was just one, it was like a highlight film, the entire, sec you could almost say the second half was the play of the game. It was that kind of that kind of game. Outstanding job by our entire crew all year, led by Vinny Conway, our director, our engineer, John Reyes, Rita Rodriguez, our producer all year. Great work by them, and we thank you for joining us this entire season. It's been a joy, and now the Aggies head to Vegas, Perfect in the whack. Winners of 19 straight games on senior night. Nonetheless, join us for our next telecast. Aggies softball on March 18th, where they host Texas Tech at four.
Tonight's broadcast was a co-production of students and staff at New Mexico State. For the entire crew, my partner Russ Bradford, Adam Young, thanking you for joining us. We say good night. The Aggies are perfect here at the Pan Am.